In this video, we are going to talk about Zoran Yaksic, a close friend of Mileta Miljanic, his right-hand man and one of the top people in Group America. Zoran migrated to America with his best friend, Mileta Miljanic, where he met Bosko Radonjic and Vojislav Recevic, and later, alongside Miljanic, led Group America. They initially worked as bodyguards for Bosko Radonjic, but were sentenced in the late 1980s for credit card fraud and other small crimes. Yaksic spent most of the 90s behind bars, while Miljanic laid the foundation for their work after Yaksic came out. The story of Group America begins in the 70s, when the young Serb Bosko Radonjic emigrated from Yugoslavia to the USA. In the 1990s, the leadership of the group was taken over by Radonjic's young associate. Recevic guided the establishment of connections to other gangs and governments, and it was under his rule that Group America came to be. But it wasn't until Mileta Miljenic took over that the group became multi-continental. Miljenic took over after Recevic disappeared in 1997. The members of the gang believed that he was killed and took bloody revenge for that. His brother, Veslin Recevic, known as Meda, orchestrated a meeting with a plan that would smoke out traitors. The first thing they did was take Recevic's suspected assassin to a villa in Belgrade and tortured him until he ratted out his fellow conspirators. Afterward, they dismembered him using a chainsaw. With the information they got from the traitor, they took revenge on other people involved with Recevic's murder. During that action, they managed to kill leaders of rival gangs and some members of the police. After the killing spree, it was Mileta Miljanic that took over as the new leader of Group America and pulled Yaksic in. It was his job from the get-go to handle drug trafficking and the officials from South American countries from which he obtained cocaine. Mileta and Zoran are close friends, but with very different characters. In one of the wiretapped conversations recorded while both were under investigation by the Italian police, Miljanic can be heard advising Yaksic, Zoran, please just be careful. Always be at the back. Don't fall into traps. Don't take chances. We'll never go hungry. If we fall, it's all over. Then there's no life. Everybody knows the names Pablo Escobar, Sinaloa Cartel, Guadalajara Cartel. But why is Group America not that well known outside the government officials who are searching for them, although they had moved hundreds of tons of cocaine to Europe? Well, it has a lot to do with Yaksic. He controlled shipment size and handpicked the people in charge of smuggling. He never sent more than 100 kilograms per shipment. This low-key strategy served them well. Smaller shipments are much less likely to attract attention, and if the operation is blown, the financial damage is limited. Also, smaller loads can be handled by beginner operatives, allowing gang leaders to minimize their exposure. In most instances where Group America shipments have been seized, the only people to see the inside of a cell are disposable couriers. FBI, Interpol, and local governments are less likely to devote resources to investigations that might not catch larger fish. As seen time and time again in the history of Group America, courts in most countries tend to lower sentences in proportion to the size of the shipment. Cocaine master sentenced to 20 years in prison. But even Yaksic's plans weren't bulletproof. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison in early 2016 in Peru for continuous cocaine smuggling, bribing officials, and leading several organized local criminal groups. But there was still hope when the verdict from 2019 was annulled because of a procedural error. The judge who tried Yaksic had also participated in the investigation against him. Because of this, the verdict was cancelled and a new trial was ordered, but Zoran was ultimately handed the same sentence. But how did he get caught? Using thousands of pages of court files and interviews with prosecutors, policemen, and intelligence agents, the investigators were able to reconstruct Yaksic's role in the cocaine smuggling and his connections to Peruvian drug families. When he was first brought up, the investigators weren't even looking for him. In early 2016, Peruvian police were already deep into a long-running operation targeting a group of local drug traffickers known as Golondrinas, Swallows. The police tapped the phones of the three leading families tied to drug trafficking, and that's how they found Yaksic, alongside his connections. But he was more elusive than the locals. He used public phones and an encrypted messaging system on his cell phone so the police couldn't intercept his calls. He had allegedly gone through 40 different identities, although the police found only two in the beginning. They weren't exactly sure who the man was. He hid his trail so well that even the special service didn't know who he was, so they called him by another nickname, El Grande, because of his imposing height. But they knew from the wiretaps that he wanted to buy three tons of cocaine, and after an underworld source told police that he had previously spent time in a Peruvian prison, they were able to determine his true identity. It was not that difficult to ask prisoners if they know a two-meter tall muscular bald white guy. When they revealed his identity, they discovered from Interpol that he was also wanted in Argentina, 
Germany, Greece, and Italy. But Jakšić was aware of the investigation, and as the ring around him was about to close, he managed to slip out. But he was alone, with no money and no equipment. They found him shortly after when they caught a phone conversation in Serbian, where he was trying to arrange a pickup from his U.S. colleagues. He was finally arrested at the Peru-Ecuador border after a years-long manhunt. In April 2019, Zoran was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Authorities in Greece have requested his extradition if he were ever to be released. He is wanted there on a 2007 drug trafficking charge. Jakšić also faces trial in Italy for his alleged involvement in the MSC Armonia operation. It is suspected that Jakšić and Miljanić bought a large amount of cocaine from Uruguay on the ship MSC Armonia, which sailed into Venice on April 6, 2009. The first trial was held in their absence, and Jakšić was sentenced to 10 years in prison and a fine of 60,000 euros. The Court of Appeal overturned that verdict and ordered a retrial because the accused in the proceedings were unavailable to the Italian court. Retrial was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and is yet to be resumed. It was finally over. The biggest foreign drug lord was caught and he couldn't do any more damage, right? Wrong. Jakšić continued to orchestrate other members from behind bars without any issues. Jakšić was first incarcerated in Miguel Castro Castro prison, where he enjoyed freedom behind bars. It was brought to light when a journalist, Pavla Holklova, disguised herself as a sex worker to get an interview with Jakšić in 2017. She had found out that he was able to obtain whiskey and that he was frequently entertained by multiple prostitutes without any trouble from the guards. While he enjoyed his time behind bars, his comrades were working on getting him out. Group America teamed up with the Sinaloa cartel and they had spent over $500,000 constructing a 230-meter escape tunnel under the Castro Castro prison that would have led Jakšić and several others to freedom. The police received a warning that he was making escape plans, and thus he was suddenly transferred to another prison in early 2019. Police eventually discovered the tunnel, but not before Jakšić had already been transferred. It was later discovered that the people that were digging his tunnel stopped when they found out about the move and filled the tunnel with sandbags. The tunnel was not buried, because they were waiting for a moment for Zoran to be returned to Castro, and then continue with the work. Even after the failed escape attempt, Jakšić did not calm down, and after being transferred to the prison at the military base in Kalao, he tried to escape again. The details of the second plan were not disclosed, but it is known that his transfer took place under unconventional security measures. Jakšić is considered a well-connected and smart criminal in this part of the world. Because of this, the investigators formed a special unit that follows him and his Peruvian connections. The established unit received information from abroad that Jakšić's friend landed in Ecuador and entered Peru, and they also found out that he communicated from inside the prison with a mysterious Serb named The Stranger about the delivery of narcotics to Europe. They suspected Peru to be the base where this criminal group stores drugs and then exports them through the ports of Callao and Paita. After the police broke into Jakšić's cell, it was confirmed that he was the one who coordinated the shipments of cocaine from the prison and that they were directed abroad by the stranger. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Till next time.